हेलो गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू माय चैनल केमिकल डायरी इन दिस वीडियो एंड टुडे वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द सल्फर साइकिल सल्फर रिमेन इन एलिमेंटल फॉर्म इन पेट्रोल एंड हाउ वी रिमूव इन एलिमेंटल फॉर्म सो टुडे यू आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द सल्फर साइकिल द सिंपल इज सल्फर विल बी इन एलिमेंटल फॉर्म इन इन पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स एंड इट चेंजेस टू एस टू एस and after that we receive as a sulfur so uh, while meanwhile when you when you are going to learn about sulfur cycle so you will learn about that uh, hydro treating desulfurization and acid gas removal unit amine degeneration unit and so water stripper unit and sulfur recovery unit unit in previous video i have explained separately about the different unit so in this video i am going to teach you about that step by step uh, how different types of unit are used and why it is used so you are going to learn all those things about in this unit so let's start first of all the feed feed such as petrol diesel kerosene naphtha or natural gas uh, usually contain high amount of sulfur nitrogen oxygen mainly and also it also contain minerals so uh, you know that whenever we burn the burn anything it gives carbon dioxide but if feed contains sulfur it will give sulfur dioxide and uh, carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is okay for the atmosphere than sulfur dioxide so sulfur dioxide is very harmful and dangerous to the atmosphere and pollution board also does not allow high amount of sulfur burning in the atmosphere because it not only disturb the environment but also very pollutant to the life aquatic life and uh, and the nature so that is why may uh, pollution board also does not allow a huge amount of sulfur to be burned so for this reason we have to remove the sulfur so sulfur is removed by you by using a unit that is called desulfurization desulfurization is nothing but to remove the sulfur or also called as hydro treating hydro treating nothing but i can say that hydro units are hydro treating units are needed in refinery to uh, in refinery to clean the stream from contaminant what are the contaminant nitrogen oxygen and uh, sulfur and harmful metals uh, hydro treating not only remove the contaminant but also saturate the olefin lastly but not least it also uh, used for de aromatization and it also improve the kerosene smoke point diesel c10 number and diesel index meanwhile it also improves lube oil viscosity color and storage stability and and lastly i can say that it provides low sulfur fuel so this is the main usage and main uh, main explanation of the hydro treating why we do or in the simple sense just to remove sulfur from the feed we use hydro treating so in hydro treating we use hydrogen when uh, when hydrogen react with sulfur it become h2s so this is how we remove uh, sulfur when hydrogen react with nitrogen it become ammonia nh3 when hydrogen react with water uh, react with oxygen it uh, become h2o so take this example nitrogen plus hydrogen it become ammonia oxygen plus hydrogen it become h2o water and sulfur plus uh, hydrogen become h2s so this how we remove uh, sulfur by 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 desulfurization or hydro treating so after that the hydro treated fuel hydro treated uh, liquid will go for the treated feed as will treated feed so here what happen when hydrogen is added in the fuel in the feed so uh, uh, in the form of hydro, hydrogen sulfide ammonia other things will be removed so our main feed is is called treated feed it will go for fractionation or distillation of other processing so the whatever the from here then again hydrogen is uh, removed uh, after that it go to uh, high pressure separator in which sour water is separated and uh, hydrogen is separated and the off gases will go to the uh, amine gas acid gas removal unit in which linamine is added 
and after that it become rich amine then rich amine go to um, amine regeneration unit in which h2s is removed and lean amine again goes back to this unit so this is how continuation take place i told you that uh, during hydro treating or desulfurization process when hydrogen react with oxygen it becomes water water is nothing but in the sense sore water uh, so during this unit sore water is the uh, it will be collected in the sore water stripper and after in sore water stripper after giving heat uh, sore water stripper h2s is removed so h2s from amine unit and sore water stripper unit it will go to the sulfur recovery unit so in sulfur recovery unit molten sulfur so in sulfur recovery unit we recover sulfur as a single elemental form this is how so this is the cycle we get sulfur in the fuel and we in the in the hydro treating we made it h2s and h2s is uh, separated by using amine solution and after that we got single sulfur then this sulfur will be uh, use um, will be used in uh, making production of sulfuric acid and after that uh, sulfuric acid it is mainly used for phosphate fertilizers so this is about a sulfur cycle so we are going to see about the different unit uh, briefly so this is uh, desulfurization or hydro treating or hydro desulfurization you have seen that there are so many job about the desulfurization hydro treating kerosene hydro treating naphtha hydro treating fuel hydro treating crude hydro treating and natural gas so first of all uh, i told you that the main function of hydro treating is to remove the sulfur so after that what we get low fuel low sulfur fuel feed so uh, this is the uh, this is a simple diagram for desulfurization these are uh, take the example as feed as natural gas crude oil fuel kerosene naphtha so we remove uh, uh, we remove sulfur or contaminate from the feed by using hydrogen so in a reactor what happen hydrogen and feed will go and after mixing at high temperature and high pressure um, as hydrogen react with the sulfur to form h2s and uh, nitrogen react with uh, hydrogen to form ammonia and oxygen become water and uh, other uh, metals also and uh, and, and olefins also get saturated so after that what happen uh, hydrogen is added then from this we get refined uh, produce and after that uh, what happen here we get uh, refined product and after that uh, it will it will go to separator in separator we get hydro treated feed nothing but a refined product and after that uh, from top you know the hydrogen the lattice lighter gas so it will be removed in high pressure separator and the remaining will be here will we get sore water and the remaining gas or off gases we will go to acid gas removal plant unit in which lean amine is added and after that uh, lean once lean amine is added it gets it receive the it absorb the h2s and after absorbing whatever the gas is go it will go to the flare or you can use it for the burning or um, to the furnace so that you can uh, you can achieve the steam so uh, is, this is called acid gas removal unit and after that it goes to amine regeneration unit so lean amine uh, in amine regeneration unit so h2s is removed h2s is removed and it go to sru unit so this is how lean um, once uh, uh, rich amine is, is nothing but the amine which contain con uh, considerable amount of uh, hydrogen sulfide so once hydrogen sulfide is removed it will go to sru and uh, and the amine will it will be lean amine so lean amine will go to acid acid gas removal plant and again it absorb h2s and it goes to ARU. so this is how continuous circulation take place after that goes to sru from sru sulfur is removed and after this sulfur is used for making sulfuric acid acid production sulfuric acid plant and sulfuric acid used in fertilizer plant so this is how uh, about the cycle so sore water the sore water will use sore water stripper in which uh, 
so hydrogen sulfide is removed and hydrogen sulfide will go to SRU SRU is nothing but sulfur recovery plant so this is about the desulfurization hydro treating now you are going to see about the um, acid gas removal unit or also called as acid gas sweetening unit or amine treating unit acid gas processing unit just now we have seen that in hydro treating uh, we get uh, sulfur in the form of hydrogen sulfide and ammonia nitrogen in the form of ammonia and water in the form of oxygen so you know that uh, in the high pressure separator hydrogen is removed and hydro treated feed will go for the fractionation so the whatever the off gases which contain hydrogen sulfide from the fractionator and high pressure separator will come to will go to the acid gas processing or acid gas removal unit in which hydrogen sulfide is removed so we get sour gas sour gas is nothing but a gas which which mainly contain hydrogen sulfide so sour gas will go to the knockout drum so that whatever the hydrocarbon or the entrained liquid will get collected after that the gas which is free from entrained liquid will go to the uh, sour gas scrubber or nothing but a contactor in which from here from top linamine is distributed and uh, when linamine go, goes from top and gas will go from the bottom both get contacted so the amine capacity and capability is that it absorbs the hydrogen sulfide because amine is basic and its pH is around uh, 11 so it is highly basic so it absorbs uh, all the acidic compound and become rich amine so after that uh, rich amine uh, rich amine will go to amine regeneration unit and um, amine regeneration unit where hydrogen sulfide is removed and it become lean amine again lean amine comes here it absorbs hydrogen sulfide so this process take place continuously and um, so sour gas comes here and go to the sour gas scrubber or contractor and become sweet gas sweet gas is, uh, is nothing but a gas which does not contain noticeable amount of hydrogen sulfide whereas sour gas is the gas which contain h 2 s so ht therefore from sour gas becomes sweet gas and from lean amine it become rich amine so here what happened loss of uh, hydrogen sulfide and gain of hydrogen sulfide here uh, it absorbs hydrogen sulfide and uh, after that it go to reach amine, uh, amine regeneration unit and and from here sour gas does not contain uh, h2s because h2s is absorbed by amine so the resultant gas will be sweet gas this gas will be used in the furnace or you can send to the flare if you have large amount of sweet gas so this can so this sweet gas will be burned in the furnace so it is uh, generated as co2 and we receive um, and once the gas is uh, burned in the furnace it is used to, to produce the steam and steam turbine is used for generating the electric, electricity so this is about the acid gas removal unit so in the sulfur cycle just now we have learned about the hydro treating or uh, hydro treating and um, desulfurization and uh, acid gas removal unit i would like to, like to explain you about the hydro crack cracking also uh, because we know that hydro treating is uh, used for uh, uh, are needed in refinery uh, to clean the stream therefore hydro cracking also use hydrogen uh, in hydro treating also we are using hydrogen and hydro cracking also in hydro cracking it's nothing but to to make the feed into simple form for example hydro crack the heavy gas oil to distillate so this is called hydro cracking so we have uh, understand well about this now i am going to explain you about the amine regenerator unit just now we have seen that acid gas removal unit in which lean amine goes from the top and from bottom uh, sour gas will go so amine resulted amine will become rich amine so rich amine will go to the amine regeneration unit in which uh, we remove hydrogen sulfide which go to sulfur recovery unit so in, in amine regeneration unit we have first a flash drum in which rich amine comes to the flash drum after coming to the flash drum it goes to the here uh, interchanger interchanger the function of the interchanger is to interchange the cold and hot heat for example the the amine 
I told you that uh, linamine is the amine which does not uh, contain noticeable amount of hydrogen sulfide whereas richamine is the amine which contain huge amount of hydrogen sulfide so the in amine regenerator we have reboiler so when he when when this is heated so the resultant will be linamine so the linamine temperature will be high whereas the amine rich amine which is going to the regenerator will temperature will be low so both the temperature will get exchange so this is the amine interchanger or i can say that uh, product or feed interchanger so the temperature of the uh, in the flash drum may be around 50 degree or 45 degree so after flash drum it goes to the interchanger after interchanger it 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 become hot and it go to amine regenerator amine regenerator nothing but a it is like a distillation column or you can use as packet column so in this there are different types of trays depending upon the type of feed and quantity of the feed so what happened here we have reboiler so the function of the reboiler is to heat the amine uh, amine solution present in the amine regenerator so with the help of reboiler we supply steam here and uh, whatever the amine uh, will reach amine will come here and get heated so after heating the hydrogen sub sulfide is removed and um, hydrogen sulfide is removed and hydrogen sulfide from the top it go to the uh, reflux drum and from ref reflux drum whatever the entrained amine will come back and uh, and will will come here and after that it go to the sulfur recovery unit it go to sulfur recovery unit for the uh, sulfur recovery unit when h2s uh, will go uh, it will become sulfur so after that uh, and you know uh, for you know that uh, reboiler is used to heat up the amine whereas we have amine condenser the function of the amine condenser is to condense the uh, condense the gas and also to maintain the temperature you know that when when the main principle of removing h2s is the low pressure the principle behind is that to maintain low pressure and high high temperature amine h2s is removed from the solution uh, the principle is that uh, low pressure at high temperature it removes whereas in acid gas uh, unit we have to maintain high pressure and low temperature but in sour water stripper and amine regeneration unit we have to maintain low pressure and high temperature so this is how we remove so after that and uh, in amine condenser we supply cooling water supply and cooling water return if temperature increases then um, if temperature increases then uh, cooling water supply and uh, supply will go and temperature get reduces this all function on the control walls and uh, all the things are automatic when temperature increase control wall open and send the water to the amine condenser and when temperature reduce it will stop and to to heat the amine we have reboiler so if temperature increases it, it uh, send lot of uh, steam when temperature reduces it send when increases it will it will cut off the stream so this is how we maintain the temperature uh, we maintain temperature more than 120 and whereas uh, so that uh, we can separate the h2s in this amine regeneration unit our main aim is to remove the h2s from the uh, amine so once uh, amine, rich amine goes to the amine regenerator and after getting heat up H2S is uh, removed, uh, H2S is segregated and uh, we get the lean amine and lean amine again. After that go to the interchanger, from interchanger again it go to the one, another exchanger. After that it will go to the lean amine storage vessel and from lean amine storage vessel it go to amine reclaim unit. Amine reclaim unit is nothing but the unit which is used for the filtration of the amine. Filtration of the amine. For example you know that uh, when a mind uh, go to acid gas uh, removal unit uh, we see that uh, there are so many metals and so many oxygenated compound aromatics hydrocarbon so um, our amine get dirtier so uh, to to increase the life of the amine we send this amine to the amine reclaim unit in amine reclaim unit there are five types of filters are used the filters such as mechanical filter and uh, strainer filter and candle filter and uh, sand filter and activated carbon filter so when when amine go for 
go through this five filter whatever the impurities or whatever the dirt present in the lean amine solution it will get uh, clean and the resultant amine will be clean amine so clean amine will go to amine storage vessel this is a lean, lean amine storage vessel which has uh, contaminants so these contaminants are removed in amine reclaimed unit reclaim nothing but to get back the amine in correct position so from amine reclaim unit uh, whatever the amine which is filtered will go to uh, amine storage vessel from that again it go to acid gas removal unit to observe the h2s from the uh, sour gas unit or uh, sour gas scrubber so it observe h2s again um, again rich amine will come to amine regeneration and uh, from amine regeneration with the help of rebore it become lean amine so this is how the process take place so now i am going to explain you about the sour water scrub sour water stripper so before that uh, amine i would like to say you that uh, amine is the organic compound which is derived from ammonia so n h3 n h3 so when h is removed uh, in place of that uh, one hydrocarbon is added for example uh, h2s so this is how we remove so amine is the so we use amine so there are different types of amine methyl diethanol amine and methanol amine and methyl uh, glycolamine and uh, MEA and tetraethanolamine so these are the things we use for the uh, as the amine and in flash drum uh, you know that uh, when rich amine comes it has uh, some amount of oil or nothing but the hydrocarbons so in flash drum uh, hydrocarbons are removed and will go to light hydrocarbon drain compartment and, and I told you that you have to maintain the temperature and pressure so from here whatever h2s is separated it will go to sulfur recovery unit in case if there is a problem or a problem in sulfur recovery unit the if the, the if the vessel is pressurized it will go to the flare okay now now you are going to learn about the sulfur recovery unit before that i would like to explain you about sore water stripper Sour water stripper. Sour water is the uh, water which contain noticeable amount of H2S or, uh, or uh, the sour water which has acidic compound. Acidic compound in the petroleum uh, companies is nothing but H2S. H2S is the very killer gas and very dangerous gas. So we receive sour water from the hydrotating unit and petro and so many petroleum units uh, we for example hydro cracking or merox merox is nothing but uh, mercaptum removal so merox hydro treating and uh, kerosene naphtha unit so from so many unit we receive sour water so sour water will we receive in sour water flash drum and in in sour water flash drum you know that we receive sour water from petroleum fractions and distillation units so so mainly it contain oils so we have one collation filter here so it remove uh, and we have decanter type of filter so whatever the top oil is there it will get collected and so what and it will go to hydrocarbon drain drum and from hydrocarbon we send it to again to the distillation unit where uh, all the oils are collected after that uh, whatever the sour water will come here and it will go to the interchanger interchanger in which strip water have high temperature whereas we need high temperature for the sour water so whatever the strip water temperature will get interchanged with the sour water after that uh, both the temperature te get uh, interchange the heat because for strip water vessel we do not want it to have high temperature so that is why instead of using PHC of uh, cooling water we interchange the heat this gives um, uh, economical to the plant so after that whatever the sour water get heated it will go to the uh, sour water it will go to the stripper stripper nothing but a distillation column it has uh, two or three chimney trays and depending upon the feed or depending upon the quantity of sour water generated in your plant and in sour water uh, stripper 
we have a reboiler to heat the sour water when sour water is heated it um, h2s is segregated or separated from the water so the resultant water will be strip water so after that uh, sour water is removed uh, sour gases removed h2s will go to knockout drum and from knockout drum whatever the gases are there will go to sulfur recovery unit whatever the entrain liquid will come back to this unit and uh, we have reboiler reboiler is nothing but a heat duty equipment we supply which heat which heat the sour water here we will have pump so with the help of pump it pumps to the sour water and here also we have pump with the help of pump strip water is pumped to the strip water vessel and he, here also we will have pump with the help of pump sour water cooler in case temperature increases in the uh, if temperature or pressure increases in the stripper uh, pump around cooler pumps more more amount of water to the stripper so that cool cool water cool cool sour water goes and uh, decrease the temperature so this is how we maintain the temperature and if pressure you know that if uh, pressure is directly proportional to temperature pressure increases temperature increases so we reduce the temperature therefore pressure is reduced so by this uh, we maintain the temperature over here with the help of sour water pump around so if temperature goes high we will use sour water cooler to maintain the temperature if temperature goes low then we will supply more steam so that uh, reaction take place you know that the main uh, main phenomena main principle for the sour water stripper and amine regeneration unit is that uh, suitable parameters are low pressure high temperature whereas for amine acid gas removal unit high pressure low temperature so this is a inversely proportional to the acid gas unit so to, re to remove uh, h2s h2s can be removed from the sour water at low pressure so this is the uh, basic uh, parameter and suitable parameters to that we have to maintain low pressure and high temperature so that we can easily scrub or we can easily separate h2s from the sour water so the resultant water will be when h2s is uh, when sour water is heated h2s will uh, goes up because of low density and which and it will go to no, with the by passing by knockout drop it will go to sulfur recovery unit so the resultant water will be strip water strip water will be go to the interchanger after interchanger if we wanted to have for some more low temperature it will go to another interchanger and another exchanger after that it go to strip water and after from strip water strip water it goes for plant circulation in plant circulation nothing but we use strip water in sulfur recovery unit and we use in tgtu tail gas treating unit and also we use uh, strip water in uh, hydro cacking and we also use strip water in flare unit and after that uh, it is used in simple in the sense it is used in uh, hydro treating hydro cracking uh, or, or it is used in ETP so so this is how we use strip water and again it goes to the sru t tail gas treating unit and hydro treating unit and again it becomes sour water again sour water comes through the flash drum and h2s is removed it becomes strip water so this is how we circulate the water and how we uh, remove the h2s from the plant so now i have covered the sour water so sour water is nothing but the water which contain h2s strip water is the strip water which does not contain sour water water from the stripper is called strip water so now i'm going to explain you about uh, sulfur recovery unit so till uh, sulfur recovery unit you have seen that there are many jobs and you will get high paid salary about sulfur recovery unit so till now i have explained you about uh, a mine regeneration unit sulfur sour water stripper unit acid gas removal unit and uh, hydro treating hydro cracking so now this is the final one which i am going to explain you about uh, sulfur recovery unit this is the last process after that we get elementals we get sulfur in the elemental form this is called modified close process or sulfur recovery unit we get h2s 
from sore gas uh, sore gas from the sulfur recovery unit and uh, sore gas from amine regeneration unit so we get like this so this is the knockout drum knockout drum in which sore gas come and whatever the condensed liquid go will go back to the sore water stripper unit and from amine regeneration unit whatever the condensed uh, 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 liquid is there it will go back to amine regeneration unit after that whatever the h2s gas will go to the sore gas preheater in which uh, we we send so sore gas preheater is nothing but a, a vessel type in which steam coils are there so from one so in tube side steam will go and in terms it become condensed so whatever the sore gas is there it become heated and uh, it become heated so we increase the temperature before sending to the furnace and after that uh, we send air with the help of blower so we receive air from uh, with the air goes to from the filter so that it should not choke the it should not uh, choke the uh, pores of the burner and also the blower so we receive air uh, from with the help of process air fan and we know that uh, when we are heating sore gas we have to heat the air also so air also go to the air preheater it is a like vessel type shell and tube like so steam will go from the tube and from shell air will go so air will get heated so heated air and heated sore gas will go to, will go to the burner management system in which it it mixes the air and uh, h2s ratio so that reaction uh, proper reaction take place in the furnace and uh, you know that a sulfur recovery unit always have two two trains one will be in the continuous use and one will be standby so we have one provision for fuel gas when you are using uh, train a at that time fuel gas will heat the furnace will keep the furnace in uh, temperature you know that uh, we have to maintain 1000 degree temperature to so that h2s react with oxygen to become so2 and here we have vector wall in which again h2 h2 h2s react with so2 to become sulfur so after that here uh, here we have vector wall so i told you that uh, we have uh, sulfur sulfur recovery two train train a and train b so why because uh, if there if some problem in the wasted boiler or condenser or preheater or any types of blower so we cannot stop the plant so for this reason we will have sulfur recovery unit siu train a and train b so when we are using train a so our train b uh, will be all the all the, everything will be stand will be stopped but uh, if uh, furnace temperature is reduced then we cannot uh, do the reaction so for this reason fuel gas is used for keeping the furnace in hot hot condition and fuel gas is also used for the first time once the furnace is heated h2s react with air and it generate large amount of heat after that uh, after the reaction furnace whatever the sulfur uh, gas or sulfur h2s will go to waste heat boiler and after that this heat are uh, heat is uh, collected and gas will get cooled down and steam uh, and steam is uh, generated and this steam is used in the condenser condenser and heater and closed catalytic reactor and maintaining the temperature of the sulfur collection pit because you know that uh, the steam is economical compared to the heater so after that uh, whatever the feed will go to the condenser he, here in condenser we use boiler feed water why because if we use cooling water all the sulfur lines will get plugged because you know that sulfur get plugged at uh, below 100 degree temperature so that is why we have to maintain the sulfur in a liquid form if we if we supply cooling water then sulfur will be choked and it will become solid form so if all lines are blocked then our process will get completely disturbed for this reason also we have two sulfur trains train a and train b 
so after that go to condenser and whatever the sulfur get condensed because the boiler fit water temperature is more than 100 degree so it does not allow sulfur to condense so whatever the liquid sulfur by with the help by gravity go to the sulfur collection pit and again whatever the gases which are not condensed will go to the heater in heater we supply medium pressure steam so again whatever the gas is going will get heated and again it will it come to the close catalytic reactor in which we have catalyst uh, so whatever the, uh, the the gas h2s which does not get converted will get converted here and after that what uh, it go again it go to the condenser from condenser again whatever the sulfur is get con condensed liquid sulfur will get collected here and after that uh, the gas the remaining gas will go to the heater so uh, why we heat the gas because uh, in catalyst if sulfur accumulate it will damage our catalyst so for this reason we heat the uh, gas we, key, we heat the stream so that it should not plug the catalyst pores so that is why after condenser we, we send the remaining portion of gas to the uh, reactor by heating up so again the gas whatever the stream feed stream get heated and it goes to the close react close catalytic reactor after that the remaining traces amount of h2s which is 10 percent or remaining it will get converted to sulfur again it come to the condenser and whatever the 99% uh, of sulfur get collected here so remaining 2% uh, or 3% H2S will go to the tail gas treating unit in which uh, we scrub water I told you that uh, sore water is used in SRU so in SRU we send strip water so it collect the so from in tail gas treating unit from top uh, water is uh, circulated strip water is circulated and from bottom h2s will go so when strip water is with h2s it it absorb the h2s and becomes sore water so again this uh, treated tail gas which is free from h2s uh, will go to the uh, furnace if if there is a high amount of h2s again this gas will send back to the reaction furnace or in the locker drum so that after that again it comes here and again we use this gas so this is about the tail gas treating unit and sulfur recovery unit so this is a modified clause process and uh, uh, I'm going to explain you about the different types of reaction which is used in cross reaction cross reaction is nothing but furnace section catalyst section and site reactions this is a sulfur recovery unit reactions furnace section we have two moles of h2s plus three moles of o2 which give rise to two moles of so2 plus water and this is highly exothermic and two moles of h2s plus uh, one mole of so2 react to form sulfur vapor after that uh, water is and this is endothermic reaction so in catalyst uh, reaction h2s plus so2 gives sulfur vapor plus h2o it is moderately exothermic and side reaction such as uh, if uh, co is there it become carbon sulfide plus 3o2 it become so2 plus co2 if carbon sulfide is there cs2 plus 3o2 give rise to 2so2 and co if sulfur is there, sulfur plus O2, SO2. So these are the reactions which take place. So this is about the modified cross process. And this is one of the important topic for securing the jobs. So before ending the topic, again I would like to explain you from where sulfur is started and from where sulfur ends. So let's uh, revise again sulfur is present in feed in feed feed nothing but kerosene diesel naphtha gas or diesel or uh, paraffins or oil or gas oil so or simple in the cell petroleum product so these feed will react with hydrogen in the reactor and in hydrogen reactor we use uh, uh, in a reactor in hydro treating 
वी यूज कैटलिस एस कोबाल्ट और मोलिपडनम और निकल मोलिपडनम एंड वी कैन यूज टंगस्टन ऑल्सो दिस कैटलिस्ट आर यूज एज पर द मिक्सचर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर इज अ हाई अमाउंट ऑफ सल्फर इज देर देन वी यूज कोमो और इफ हाई अमाउंट ऑफ नाइट्रोजन इज देर वी यूज कोमो एंड इफ हाई अमाउंट ऑफ aromatic saturation is required then we use nickel so depending upon the percentage of nitrogen sulfur oxygen we decide the key which type of catalyst is used so uh, the feed which contain high amount of sulfur will go to hydro treating unit from hydro treating unit h2s is uh, sulfur will form in the form of h2s and h2s will go to the amine regeneration unit and sulfur recovery unit in which h2s is removed and uh, after that h2s go to sulfur recovery unit and from sulfur recovery unit h2s in the furnace reaction will take place and uh, at 1000 degree temperature uh, at 1000 degree of temperature h2s is split into sulfur and water so after that sulfur is collected in sulfur collection pit in sulfur collection pit we receive sulfur from different types of condenser but you you know that uh, still we have h2s in the sulfur collection pit so inside we will have uh, two types of air one for air bubbling from the bottom and we will have one sweeping air so when air is added so uh, air is added in from the bottom it is called bubbler air so when air is given from the bottom so what happened that it uh, removes h2s and we have one sweeping air is nothing but it is like a exhaust fan which collect all the h2s gas and these gas will go to the which is sent back to the furnace so that it can burn the remaining h2s and we can recover sulfur 100% after this sulfur uh, this will go to the if uh, according to the product requirement if uh, if customer need a sulfur in the pellet form granule form or uh, he he need in the paste or if he need dry sulfur or he need in cylindrical form so according to that uh, we send sulfur for example if some if a customer require liquid sulfur then we keep this sulfur in a in continuous uh, heated steam so we supply steam continuously to the vessel and we send sulfur in a liquid form if customer required sulfur in a pellets form so this sulfur will send to the uh, will send to the rollers where uh, quenching is given so uh, and uh, and there there is a bucket with a uh, sieves so pellets are formed and and that sulfur continuously roll on the roller Uh, which is in which water spraying take place so after that it become pellets and this sulfur get dry after removing the water and after that uh, hot air is passed so that complete water is get completely removed after that the, the pellet sulfur are added in the bins or silos and again it is transported to to the uh, storage so if sulfur uh, sulfur is used in granules in the form of granules it can use for long lasting and storage and there is no problem for but uh, when sulfur is uh, sent or storage in the form of liquid there are many chances that sulfur uh, may get plugged so there should be a continuous steam supply should be there and the cost of uh, um, cost of maintaining uh, dry sulfur or pellet is less compared to the liquid sulfur so depending upon the about the customer requirement uh, different types of sulfur products are made and uh, this sulfur is used in mainly in the manufacture of sulfuric acid 80% of sulfur is used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid and remaining sulfur is used in shampoos and soap industry and some pharma so use sulfur and after that sulfur Uh, sul uh, sulfur is used for making sulfuric acid and from sulfuric acid is sent to make uh, fertilizer so this is about the life cycle of sulfur from elemental sulfur to sulfur so the simple sense sulfur from the feed or nitrogen sulfur oxygen from the feed is uh, treated with hydrogen to form h2s and ammonia and water 
water is you uh, water will be redundant water will be sore water and ammonia uh, will be here will be in the furnace again convert into nitrogen and hydrogen and hydrogen uh, from the furnace will go and uh, oxygen added and become water as sore water whereas nitrogen will go as nox in the uh, furnace and uh, after that as 2s nitrogen and hydrogen is added so here as 2s uh, hydrogen plus oxygen become water and sulfur become so2 again so2 plus h2s become sulfur so this is about the life cycle of uh, sulfur from elemental sulfur to elemental sulfur so this is how uh, we we transfer sulfur in different types of and this is how we make uh, h2s and after that we receive so only these are the unit we use uh, from uh, from for removing the sulfur and and lastly the importance of hydro treating unit is that it clean the stream and remove the contaminants contaminators such as sulfur nitrogen and oxygen and metals and main function of the hydro treating is to is the saturation of olefins and also de-aromatization and it also improve kerosene smoke point diesel CT number diesel index and also useful for improving the quality of lube oil lube oil viscosity color and storage stability and provide low sulfur fuel so these are the main function of the hydro treating and in another video i will give you uh, another video about hydro treating in which i will explain you about hydro treating differences between hydro treating hydro cracking and kerosene hydro treating and naphtha hydro treating and um, you might have seen there and nowadays uh, we can see so many jobs about hydro treating and uh, hydro treating nothing but uh, hydro desulfurization so uh, hydro don't uh, confuse that hydro treating is nothing but uh, uh, treating with water uh, you know we know that hydro is nothing but water but we use hydrogen and uh, we get hydrogen from reformer uh, reformer are used to produce hydrogen so uh, from catalytic reformer we get hydrogen and this hydrogen is used for hydro treating the feed so this is about the hydro treating and uh, dear gas uh, if you have any doubts regarding hydro treating regarding sulfur recovery unit or sulfuric acid production unit or sore water stripper unit or a mine regeneration unit or any other unit please feel free to ask me and you can submit your uh, doubts or queries in the in the comment box so that i can help you and uh, i got so many response from the people and from the viewers and they asked me for the pdf and i sent to them and if you need anything for me you can ask uh, then i will email you thank you thanks for your support have a nice day